Thank you, thank you, organizers. Thank you, Mary. This is a great opportunity. Um, I'm just going to give a summary of, of some of the technical work that's involved in the Future Dams project. Uh, Future Dams is an exciting uh, GCRF project. One could say a flagship Manchester GCRF project, and it stands for Design and Assessment of Water, Energy, Food, Environment, Megasystems. And uh, that project has us looking at how uh, water, energy, food systems are uh, complex systems which, when we intervene, when we invest in them, uh, we need to up our game and do a better job at that. And that is what that project is looking at. So it's looking at a lot more than dams. And as you can see, dams in this slide here, dams doesn't stand for the hydraulic structure, it stands for design and assessment of water, energy, food, environment, megasystems. Um, a quick summary of that project, it has these six uh, big work pack, or no, these aren't work packages, these are uh, contributing disciplines, um, political science, economics, climate and hydrology, finance, climate change, systems engineering, and social impacts. There's all sorts of disciplinary work that's occurring, but also some interdisciplinary work and some integrated assessment uh, modeling, which is what I'm gonna be describing now. Um, there's a lot of researchers involved. I won't review them all, uh, but uh, you can see a summary here. And we have wonderful case studies in East Africa, West Africa, in Asia, and in the Middle East. And um, so all of these uh, co-authors are acknowledged here in this, in this talk, giving a, a summary of some of that work, especially the integrated assessment. That project is looking at some case studies um, in those four places, uh, which uh, I'm looking at here. And this is also where um, there's a lot of new dams. Dams are, of course, uh, a privileged example of water, energy, food, environment uh, in, uh, systems. And so that's uh, what this project looks like, at, looks at in the form of a case study, really. Um, so after that uh, talk by Eric, um, you know, maybe it, it is an illusion. Can, can we ever reach water, environment, food, and uh, environment? security, prosperity, and I could have added sustainability. Um, you know, working in the field, it does seem sometimes that this is an illusion. Um, I guess if we, can't, uh, if we can't reach these things in a pure sense, maybe we can at least uh, provide some kind of improvement. Uh, and surely that is possible. In fact, we, we've seen that on the ground, or certainly I have in the, in the last decade. It's possible to do a better job, that's for sure. The reason why it's so difficult to intervene in water systems, certainly for well, one of the reasons, is just the levels of interdependencies, how water is enmeshed in social and economic systems and other resource systems, including energy and food and environment. So that codependency just makes it a wicked problem and it's so hard to invest and intervene in these systems in a way that, that you can guarantee that produces an improvement. And maybe that's one of the sources of, of complexity and, and difficulty that Eric was talking about. Another one is that these are these water resources and their neighbor neighboring resources of energy, food, and environment. These are interregional transboundary resource systems. They go over geographical boundaries, and they just um, you know the benefits from these resource systems are combined over space and time in a way that really makes it difficult to know exactly what's gonna happen when you invest, when you intervene. So how can we improve these interventions? That's fundamentally the, what we're trying to do. So let me quickly give a summary. These are slides that many of you have seen before, but they're the easiest way I know of communicating basically what this integrated assessment or design framework is. Um, so in summary, three steps. Uh, the first is simulation. Um, engineers and scientists and economists and even some social scientists, you know, the fundamental way that we, the tool that we look at, to, that we use to understand the world is simulation. And that's basically your, you use your computer to track different metrics of performance of, of systems like engineering and environmental and economic. Uh, the, the big advance in the last 20 years is that you can hook any simulator to a search engine and you can optimize over the cloud or over supercomputers. So we use search, we use automated search engines. And then uh, the third element of the approach is to deliberate. Once, you, once you've learned about your system and the trade-offs implied in developing it, then that, the theory is that that's a privileged position from where you can deliberate and uh, make more informed decision-making. 
So that's the approach. Uh, system simulation, you know, is you know, the way the way that we do it in this in this project is we view resource systems just as network of supply and demand, and then we just use a computer to track those resources over time. Uh, this is a slide that many of you must be bored of. Um, this is just to show that when you're in investing or intervening in a resource system, that one of the issues is there's just billions of things you could do and invest in. Um, so what this framework does, it tries to, um, you know, this is an example of if you are buying a house, so you can buy a house that's far from work and you can buy a house or close to work, or you can buy a house that's cheap or expensive in that there's a what the economists would call an efficiency frontier. These are houses which for any distance to work is the, the cheapest. And that's what these red points are. And that's what we'll be looking to identify. So uh, economists have, for the last 150 years, economists have been calling these uh, Pareto efficient solutions. And they could, you could also just call them uh, solutions that are worthy of your attention. So this is what we, these were, Red solutions are what we identify uh, with these search algorithms. And then finally, the interesting part, perhaps, um, is, is the political and social process that this, this, is, this is embedded into um, in the governance process. So the, the idea here in the practice, because we actually do this in, in this country and in others, is that you, you build these models with stakeholders and then you, you say, okay, well, if we do this intervention, if we make this investment, how does the the, the benefit, how does the um, distribution of the benefits from the resource systems, how do they change over space and time? And you deliberate that in a, in a, in a govern, hopefully in a well-governed process, but which is very hard to do. And um, I should invite Eric to attend some of our sessions. Sometimes we have 50 stakeholders from different civil society organizations. And it's a very complex process of social political process of negotiating and deliberating and um, advocating really it's a uh, yeah it's certainly interesting uh the example i always shows is is this one one that we did for the ifc the international finance corporation they wanted to build a dam and they asked the question is there any combination of other dams that could be better and so we thought that was really interested we jumped on the, the occasion to do that with them with the tnc the nature conservancy and a consultancy erm and, and the reason why I show this, I've showed it many times before, is just it's easy to give a one minute introduction to this method. So imagine that you were gonna invest in one of these dams and you wanted to know is any combination of others, others red points potentially better? So it's an obvious question. And so rather than just look at, you know, aggregated economic assess, assessment criteria, we devised with, the, with them all sorts of criteria of how the different intervention investments would in, impact, for example, indigenous populations, the routes for migratory fish, the habitat for apes, and many, many other criteria. And then what we then, what the search involves is that the, the, the figure on the left here is the one that I showed you before, and that's a two-dimensional plot, right? So it's for two metrics. So for example, if you looked at resilience and cost, that's what you would look at. The problem is I, these, uh, they were interested in 10 metrics, and so we had to change plots. So um, if you see here, these, these points that are in blue have been converted on the plot on the right, and they've now become blue lines. So you can see that what this plot means to tell you, and, and the sort of the message from economists in the last 150 years is that there's no free lunch. You can't have everything you want. If you want a high resilience system, you're gonna have to invest a lot. And if you want to invest very little, you're going to have a low resilience system. And that's what both the blue points on the right and left show you. Um, and so you can see on the plot on the right, if you're the, the direction of good is towards the top. So if you have good resilience, you have bad performance and cost. And if you had good performance and cost, then you have bad performance and resilience. The reason why I show you that is that this is the plot that we showed with the IMF. And you can see that firm energy, fish habitat, total energy, biodiversity, great ape um, habitat loss, indigenous, indigenous um, per, um, habitat or um, area or re, you know, loss to, of land from indigenous peoples, I infrastructure, the number of infrastructure in the wetlands. And so the way, th these are those, those few solutions that are identified by the computer as being particularly promising in 10 dimensions. Obviously, this takes a few minutes to digest with them, but the idea is you can quickly filter this through a website 
and you quickly come to just a few solutions. So each one of these lines represents a portfolio of interventions and a portfolio of investments. So this was very interesting. This is much more sophisticated than the World Bank or the IFC currently uh, you know, use. This is a very analytical way. But um, we've been using these in real world systems, particularly here in England, and um, you know, working with coalitions of stakeholders, it's possible to really embed this kind of advanced analytics into a social political process. Um, so as summary, I'll just say that um, tracking benefits and costs over space and time helps negotiate interventions in complex human environment systems, and it can help collaborative planning. Let me just quickly pass over some applications. So that many of you have seen those slides before. That's the general framework. Let me just show you some exciting applications. One is in what if you have combined energy uh, water systems? Um, so this one, uh, this is just showing you an example of a water energy system. The uh, water is in blue and the energy is in red. And we've recently published this with a lot of future dams researchers. You can have a look at it. Um, and we're applying this in, for example, in West Africa. I hope you can't hear the children screaming there. Um, so here you can see an energy system in red and a water system in gray. Um, and you know what this looks like and what it is is a is a web hosted um, simulation model where the two resource systems are are um, are simulated together, and so that different interventions and investments within those within that combined resource system can be optimized. Uh, a second application, which just got published, which you can have a look at here, is specifically for ecosystem services. We've, we've um, in an example in Kenya, which is shown here, uh, about 20% of Kenya's landmass, we had identified all these ecosystem services. And the question was, well, how should you invest in infrastructure that's going to achieve the right or an appropriate balance of all those ecosystem services? And that was a really exciting application because, you know, people don't, People don't think of investing in infrastructure to maximize a portfolio of ecosystem services. So if you'd like to read about that application, it's just been published, that was neat. Another one that we're working on now with um, researchers uh, here at Manchester and at UCL is water economy. If you, if you link a simulation model of the economy and a simulation model of an engineered or natural resource system, can you potentially also uh, in optimize or, or search, search for viable investments and efficient investments in infrastructure systems that uh, benefit GDP, benefit uh, um, employment, and benefit the economy. So is it possible to do that? And we're trying to do that. And then the, finally, th this is the one that I talked to you about in England. This is a, a water energy food environment system, which is about a, a third or a quarter of, of England's landmass. And here we're trying to simulate all the resource systems together and optimize them with a, a complex coalition of stakeholders. And this is a project that which has been going on for five years and which um, just received a, a prize from the the um, the water industry a uh, water industry uh, group. Uh, so that's it for the talk. Um, some of the software is online. Uh, the, it, and we're increasingly trying to do that with future dams, um, and that's available at hydro.org. Uh, and finally, thanks very much. Uh, here's the website to future dams if you'd like to read more about it.